I think it's time, uh, which means I should probably start. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about why Fedora needs a security team. My name is Hudefa. I am a principal software engineer uh, with Red Hat. I am a part of Red Hat product security team, which was for formerly known as security response team. And now we are known as, uh, we, are, we are responsible for the product, for the security of products which Red Hat sells which includes things like, you know, Zell and JBoss and stuff like, like that. Uh, I am a part of various upstream security teams. I have been involved with uh, Mozilla, LibreOffice, PHP, Python, Samba, XORG, uh, Apache, OpenSSL. I have been involved with uh, uh, the, the different security groups and security teams uh, these upstream projects have uh, in various capacities. I have been contributing to Fedora in various ways. I used to do some infrastructure work long time back. I maintain around 28 security packages in Fedora right now. Uh, I speak a lot about uh, open source and security at our conferences. So, how, how many people have seen, seen this news? I, I think this is like two weeks back or three weeks back. Uh, recently, Arch Linux was compromised. Uh, one of the user accounts was hacked and it seems that the attacker was able to uh, commit to the repository and he was able to add a backdoor to the accurate package which they have and uh, luckily it seems it did not spread a lot some someone uh, noticed that you know uh, the checksum is a little bit different uh, the backdoor was the backdoor was not very intelligent what the backdoor basically did was it it tried to collect ma machine information like you name and uh, the version of the kernel which is running and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, basically bad things could happen. Uh, so I, I spoke with one of my co co colleagues and what he has done is he has made a document uh, which lists all the various uh, all, all the various distros which have all the various distros which have been compromised in the last 10, 10 years. And the document contains like 50 or 60 different incidents. And it basically tell, tells us that you know just because you have an open source dis distribution, it does not mean that you are immune to these kind of security threats. So that's bring, that brings me back to the question which I, uh, which I had. Uh, why does Fedora need a security team? And uh, a lot of people would say that doesn't Fedora already have a security team? So if you, if you, if you, if you click on these links, I think around five or six years back, a couple of my colleagues and some of the con contributors, they decided to form a security team. And if you read uh, one of these wiki pages, I think around 15 odd people signed, signed up, which included my, myself. And uh, out of that, I think three or four decided to really con contribute. Uh, the kind of contribution which these guys no normally did was ping package maintainers on IRC or e email or you know some, some kind of thing and ask them to patch security bugs, right? And a lot of times package maintainers say that, you know, I'm busy today, I'll do it tomorrow, you know. Uh, this, this week I have some project I'm work, working on and, you know, I won't be able to do it. Or, you know, probably I'll do it next month or I'll do it month after that. And this is really a thankless job because, it, like, you know, if you are a technical core contributor, all you, all you are doing is you are pinging people and you are asking them to patch their packages. So uh, it started with it started with a lot of in enthusiasm. They had uh, I think weekly meetings. If I am not not wrong, they had weekly meetings for a couple of years, and then uh, people started backing out because uh, it was not really exciting a uh, thing to do. Uh, the current state is it's not a really a functional team. They only exist on the wiki. They don't have meetings for the last one year or one and a half year, if, if I remember correctly, I think Jared was involved as well. Uh, they don't have a meeting, they, they, they don't have meetings at all and I am not sure if, if anybody is really fun functional. Uh, what I, I really want to do is, I want to re reboot the Fedora security team. Uh, when I say reboot, it doesn't mean that like, you know, we, we do what we previously, previously used to do. I, I, I don't want to do that the dumb job of, you know, pinging people on IRC and telling them that why, why don't you patch CCBE so and so because uh, people no, 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 normally don't respond. Uh, yeah, so as I said, contributors quickly lost, it, lost interest because there were a lot of technical people on the team and, you know, uh, technical people are not really, really good with people skills. 
so the current stress is slightly di distressing. I uh, I think yesterday I ran uh, uh, I ran a report on Fed Fedora bug bugzilla in, in, uh, on, on on the the CV bugs which are open against Fedora bug bugzilla, and I think I saw 993. So so the current version of Fedora which we have su suffers from 993 security flaws, and I think out of that that. 13 or 14 are against image magic. So the the strength the the state right now is a little bit distressing. I am sure at least 10 or 20 percent of those CVE flaws cannot be fixed or you know it was all, all already fixed because we rebuilt the pack package. But uh, the package maintainer was probably too lazy or he did not have any time to probably close the CVE or whatever. So we have we have had currently we have 993 CVE flaws which are open against packages in Fedora. So what, what my suggestion is and what I really want to do at, at this point is do some, something which is more exciting than, you know, as I said, pinging people on IRC. The first thing which I want to do is security scan package, package, packages on entry. Right? So we, we, currently have, we currently have a solid package review process. And uh, when I talk with my colleagues at Red Hat, I normally to, uh, tell, tell them that you know, Red Hat has got a lot to learn from the package review process which Fedora has. Like you know, our process is, is not even 10% of uh, the package uh, review process which Fedora has. So we have an excellent package review process. What is missing though is try to see if we can integrate some kind of automated security scan uh, on uh, the Fedora package review project and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because we, we are doing some work on this at Red Hat as well. Uh, one, one more thing which I proposed to Fesco I think a couple of weeks back and they are, they are still discussing is, is trying to figure out if there can be a package exit process as well and I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, third thing is try to have a mechanism to see if it is possible to scan com commits. So one, one thing very difficult in Fedora is to get a new package inside the di distribution, right? Because you need to go through the, 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 the review process and things like that. But uh, like, like my colleagues in security normally say, we are hard on the outside, but we are soft and mushy on, on the inside. What it basically means that once you get a package inside Fedora, once I have commit access, if I am a proven packager, then I, I basically have access to any of the packages, right? I can, it is very easy for me to introduce a, a backdoor. So I, I, I went to one of these security conferences, I think last year or year, year before that. And I spoke with, with, with this per, 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 per person and I told him that, you know, I am a Fedora contributor. And he asked me if I have, if I asked me, he asked me if I have proven packager access. And I told, told him that I, I, I do have. And then he tell, tell, tells me that, uh, would I be willing to would, would I be willing to, to introduce a backdoor in some of the Fedora packages because I, I have to, to prove a package access. So it is not impossible. It may be a little bit difficult. So it may not be impossible. There are a lot of companies. So I, I, I talk with a lot of Google security researchers. Google has this mechanism in which whatever commit you make to the Chromium repository. There is a heuristic script which runs as at the back end, probably as one of the git hooks. And the heuristic script tries to figure out if you are doing something malicious or not. So I don't have access to the code which actually does it, but it, they are probably looking at key keywords or you know uh, uh, your, your code writing mechanism or, or whatever. So these are, the, these are the three things which I really want to introduce now. Uh, so Red Hat basically uses the Fedora package review project internally. So this is a project which I started around two or three months back. We use the we have forked the Fedora uh, package review process internally. Uh, we do a lot of security scanning with a Fed, Fedora package review project. Uh, we are still writing a lot of code. The code is not good enough to be sent back to upstream, but we are still working on it. Uh, what I really want to do is probably six months down the line, make sure the code is good enough and uh, try to send it upstream to Fedora project, uh, Fedora package review project. Uh, there are a lot of things which you can do for free, right? The first thing which you can do is you can scan the NIST CV repository. So NIST maintains 
a repository of all the CVE issue, uh, CVEs which it, which it has assigned. So if a person wants to introduce a new due uh, package in Fedora, what you can do is you can take the package name and you can do a grab against the XML which they have and see if there are any CVEs which are open. If there are any CVEs which are open, then the, then the package maintainer is required to fix those CVEs first before we actually go and introduce that package in Fedora. You can run a lot of static analyzers which are available free of cost and they are open source. It can be done for free as well. You can use Red Hat XML RPC infrastructure to query if there are any open bugs against that particular package in say in Red Hat or you know if there are any open bugs in Debian or if there are any open bugs against OpenSUSE. This is something which Red Hat product security does internally. So when we have a new package we check if the Debian bugzilla, if the open SUSE bugzilla, if any of these distribution bugzillas has any open security issues and if they are any then we ask the maintainers to fix them first. So there are a lot of things which you can do. Uh, one thing very important over here is not all package reviewers are technical enough to know security. So we want to ensure that you know this can be aut automated and when you run the Fedora package review tool uh, the tool tell, tells you that you know this particular package which you are trying to review has got three CVs which are opened against it, CV so and so, so and so. And this is the link to where you can find the pat pat patches. And please ask the person who wants to introduce this package to first fix all of these CV issues. Right? So this is one thing which is missing a lot. I, I have noticed a couple of packages which were introduced and they had open security issues which is really, really bad. Uh, so like, like I said, uh, if any open security issues are, are found, then we ask the maintainers to fix them first before we are able to introduce that package in Fedora. Uh, package exit, this is, this is the, the link of the Fesco uh, uh, pr proposal which I, I introduced. There has been a lot of discussion on Fedora Devil as well. A lot of people have mailed me personally as well. Some of these people are, are offensive. Are, are offensive as well. I am not sure why. So I I wrote that I am disturbed by the large amount of packages which Fedora has. I think the last talk which I went to, Paul just said that we we have twenty one thousand plus packages in Fedora, and this guy mailed me back back saying that why are you not disturbed about obsolete versions of PHP and Bash and stuff which you have in Zell. So. Uh, <laughs> There are a few people which are offensive as well, but uh, uh, basically what I, I, I want to do is I find a lot of package maintainers are package maintainers in Fedora because they have a university project to do or you know they have interest in astronomy or they have interest in some something and you know they, they want to introduce their, their package into Fedora and a lot of these package maintainers leave say in six months or one year or two, two, two years or something like that because their project is done or you know they are no longer interested or, or their day, day job pressure is too too much. So a lot of package maintainers leave and I have noticed that the package will keep on building in the next versions of Fedora, right? So I mean uh, there is an automated rebuild against F27 and F28 and F29 and so on and so forth. Though, though the package maintainer is probably is no longer a contributor or you know he's pro probably dead or whatever. So that, that keeps on happening a lot and what basically happens is that the CVE issues which were filed against that particular pack package uh, some, some time back they used to be closed because the distribution is end of life. They are no, no, no longer closed now, they are carried over to the next version of Fedora, but in the end we end up with a lot of CVE issues against a particular package. So there has been a lot of discussion on this. My initial proposal was to wait for two release cycles. Like you know, if there are a lot of CVE against Fedora X, we wait till Fedora X plus two. Uh, we probably try to have a have a way in which we can ping the maintainer. Probably do it in an automated way. And if the maintainer does not respond, then we try to exit the package by using FTBS, right? So a similar process to what FTBS has. Uh, the maintainer can always reintroduce the package back. Like, you know, if you are on some vacation for one, one year or something like that, when you are back, you see that your package has been removed. You can always try to fix these issues and get the package back. Uh, 
my, my pr proposal also in included uh, having a list of critical RPMs which cannot be removed. Like you know, probably have RPM or DNF or one, one of these bin bin utils or you know these RPMs which are really essential to the distribution. Like if you remove them from the distribution, then Fedora won't build. So have a have a list of critical RPMs which cannot be removed. Uh, I, I was think, thinking about you know what to do with these RPMs like like image magic, right? So I think last I checked, image magic had some 53 security issues out of that. I think only 12 are currently open, but the image magic is usually a package which has got like 100 CVs in a year or something like that. And uh, a, a lot of people in Fedora surprisingly use image magic a lot, right? So uh, we can probably have a grey list of RPMs which like you know which cannot be removed because people use it a lot. But we pu pu published a grey grey list on the wiki saying that these RPMs has got a lot of security issues. So you know we have not removed them from Fedora. But if you really want to use it, then you know please use it on your own. And uh, yeah, I I don't think I I have anything more. So those are the things which I really wanted to talk talk about. A lot lot of these things are in process right right now. Like you know the fes Fesco ticket. Yes. Can I first question? Oh, here. Okay. Um, so a couple things. One, the federal security list. It, yeah, it's been completely dead. There was an email in March of this year, and I think it was a year before that was the last email on there. It's it's not happening. Uh, I think I think everything you're bringing up here is some great ideas, but there's perhaps even ways we could take it further. If we if we decide to really reboot Fedora security to be what it should be, uh, you know, th these are all great projects. But I don't I wouldn't change any of them. I think they're great. But we also have uh, the way that that this kit is run now in, in Pageo. We have the ability to instead of harassing somebody and saying, "Hey, fix your CV." I mean. They, they should just see the bug and fix it. That's not happening. Instead of harassing them, we could actually just do a pull request on their package. We file a pull request, and then you could actually even then have an automated script that goes through and checks all, all of the pull requests, and if it's not merged within a week, two weeks, whatever, then a proven packager could actually just go in and do the merge themselves and, and rebuild and get rid of that issue. Now, you still have the issue of of uh, you know, packages where the maintainer is gone, right? And it's kind of ridiculous to have a proven packager having to continuously, basically they're taking up maintenance on that product. So there would be a way to report, you know, if the version is completely out of date, right? If we've got package X version Y, and they're on version Z point whatever, upstream it's never been bumped, then that's a problem, right? So maybe we do want to drop the package. But it's a way that we could hopefully close a lot of those security bugs uh, without, you know, for, it, or with the maintainers who are not willing to do the work themselves. Right. I, I think the big, big chunk of pro problem over here is so uh, a lot of these CV issues are, 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 are related not only, I mean, it, it's a, a lot of these CV issues don't have patches which are directly applicable. Uh, I, I, I think the ones which I so, so, so from the 993 issues which we, which I was I was talking about, a lot of them are a little bit more complicated than trying to backport the patch from upstream or you know trying to re rebase the package. Uh, a lot of these PHP packages, for for example, like the sub packages which PHP or, or, or Ruby gems, they required a little bit of more technical and component know-how to try to figure out if this CV issue does really affect the way PHP works in Fedora or the way PHP works or the way Ruby gems works in Fedora because what product security basically does is we file a, a bug against Fedora but I, I'm not sure if they have enough time to you know probably look at how the version of PHP in Fedora is different from Zell and you know whether this this one would really affect or not. Right, well, uh, so on the kernel side we get the same thing we get, in fact there was one today that was, a, a, or yesterday was a bug that it was fixed in 4.14.8 we fixed it a long time ago. That's great. I, I'd still rather get the notification and look and say yes, we're covered, than not getting a notification at all. But I mean, there's, for the ones that can be, so let's say we get rid of 300 of those 900 and something. I mean, that still puts us in a better position, right? Definitely. So. Uh, though I, I think the wiki says that you know it's it's the responsibility of the package maintainer to patch the security flaws. Probably, you know, if the package maintainer is away on vacation or, you know, he's probably not well or he's too, too, too busy, then, you know, we can probably try, try doing that. 
uh, but uh, in, in my opinion it should not it should not give a false it should not give a false signal to package maintainer that you know if you don't fix your security flaws we we will do it yeah right so which which is very important in, in my opinion uh, yeah, I mean, plus plus if, if the pack package is real, really really important, like you know, if it if it is open SSL or if it is say GNU TLS or something like that, which is a really really important package, and you know it really needs to be fixed, then you know we can have someone from proven packages. But I I, I have seen a lot lot of these CVs which are open against games which we have. So. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Would it make sense to somehow label packages with open and known CVEs in Bugzilla in software management tools, such as GNOME software or DNF or something? So you are you are trying to update system and it tells you 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 have those packages on your system installed and there are known CVEs for them. Yeah. Uh, just to create a pressure for the package maintainer, or just that people actually see it that, that this package is still broken and they can. Uh, in in my opinion, that probably needs a lot of work. So yeah, I, I I I was thinking of doing some something like this for the gray gray list packages, which I was talk, 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 talking about, like image magic and stuff like that, which has a lot of CVs open, but people still use it a lot. Uh, so probably it would be e easier to list those packages on the wiki, saying that you know this is the list of unsafe or un insecure packages. Yeah, but then, no, then nobody then, reads that though. Uh, yes, so definitely, definitely. But what, but what what if we did it so? I mean, it's a simple query in Bugzilla to 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 find the CV and even some non-CV security bugs. They're they're all tagged with security, right? So it's a fairly simple query. What about publishing that list? What With package owner and package, and you publish that list say once a month. Yes. Because uh, to to Fedora to Bell, yeah, that's, places that's like that, and so that way people can see and and hopefully. There's a little bit of public shaming there to the point of if your name if your name and those CVEs have been on that list for five or six months, you know, people might start to give you a hard time too, and there's some peer pressure there. It, it could be, I mean, that that could be automated where yeah, hey, you just run this script and, yeah. and send the output to, to the list. Yeah, so one 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 small sub project which I want wanted to do is we have this internal dashboard in product security which we use which will tell tell me you know what are the different bugs which I have in my queue. So one one internal thing which I wanted to do is what, to have a dashboard kind of thing which feeds its data from the Bugzilla query, query right? And the dashboard tell, tells you that against which uh, against which distribution you have how many critical, important, moderate, and low flaws which are open, right? Uh, that's not not only going to put pressure on the maintainer, but it's going to put a pressure on people up also like probably Fesco or you know whatever saying that uh, Fedora 28 has got say. Five critical and 28 important issues, and you know people start asking questions like you know why why these issues are not being fixed. And then when you click on the graph, it will tell tell you against which component. It probably it goes to a sub page and it tells you against which component how many issues are open, and uh, who who uh, which main, main maintainer has the worst record of trying to address the security flaw. So you know probably this is so this is a sub sub project which I which I wanted to do, but I did not bring up over here. Because it was not that big enough, and it's it's not very difficult, right? I mean, you you read data from Bugzilla and you par parse it, and you know you, you just make a graph of stuff. So it's it's not very difficult. Right. I, I think it's worthwhile. I mean, yeah. there's so there is a community aspect, and you know people don't want to to be seen as the guy who doesn't address security, right? Yeah. And package maintainers who are showing up in a in a you know, monthly email to. And I don't think it needs to be more frequently than monthly, but yeah. you know, if people are showing up there consistently, maybe they'll get some peer pressure to also fix them. Uh, I have a question, but on that list, what, where is the actual problem? Is it on the maintainer or is it on the upstreams? Because I've seen uh, myself several upstreams which have not been updated for 10 years in Tutor Matches, and you have a package, it has CVs, but as a maintainer, what will they do? Will they take over maintainers with packets? Sure, they can. Oh, of course you can, but you will not do. Uh, no, nobody did, in my experience. Well, yeah. well, why should I maintain a package that has upstream that's been dead for 10 years and has security issues? Well, what's the value in that? I asked the same question. The, the answer I got was because someone is using this Fedora. Well, and they should then. <laughs> yes, but it's not a policy of Fedora to remove these packages. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's no such process to, or guideline. 
And that's what there's, it, there's yeah. So that's what the Fesco part of what the Fesco ticket asks. But you know, part of it is if I'm a maintainer of this package, I cared about it enough. I should if, if nobody else is going to fix it. I mean, clearly somebody published a CD, right? So there's somebody's researching it. It should be able, to, right? I go fix it. And if I can't go fix it, then you might mark you, know, you, you close you might close the bug as won't fix, and here's one, right? I mean, I've got a list of kernel bugs right now that, because the first thing I do every morning is check the, the kernel CDs. It's also the last thing I do before I get. There's 20 some odd kernel bugs right now. There's one researcher who's been going through, and they're all a crafted file system of this. If you mount it, will DOS the kernel. Well, I, either you've got root or you've got physical access to USB. So there are really low priority issues. And the one, I mean, all the major processor ones have been fixed, but there's like HFS, there's uh, J2FS, things like that. that when somebody gets to them, then I'll push them. And but if if someone wants to ask me the status of that CD, I can tell them the status of that CD, right? And if this the CD is right, you know, not a huge deal, then the maintainer of this old package should be able to say, well, I can't fix this, but I can tell you it's not a huge deal, and perhaps mark it as such in the bug and close this won't fix. Mm -hmm. And at least then, if somebody's looking, they can see, all right. This CV was here. This is the package maintainer's response, and it's been closed. It won't fix. At least we know it's been seen and addressed in some way. Exactly. So, uh, uh, one of the main main uh, from the 993 CVs which I looked at, I think 10 percent of them were all, all, already addressed, but they were no, not closed. I, I I don't know why they were not closed. Around 20 percent of them were CVs which cannot be addressed. Like there is no upstream patch, or the patch is too 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 uh, too, too intrusive. Or like you know, uh, some somehow some of those reasons like that. So all I ask for the maintainers is to update the bug, saying that you know this is the reason why this particular CV cannot be addressed and kind of close as won't fix or can't fix or, or, or whatever. Right. Uh, plus uh, the, uh, the policy pr uh, pr proposal which I have basically has got different criteria for different security levels of the bug. So if you have a critical bug which is op open against your package for the for the last three months. You probably you know remove it in X plus one. If you have a low priority bug, if you have 20 bugs, then you know you keep keep, keep it for X, X plus two. But then if you have for for 40 bugs, then you know you probably want to really look at what is happening. So it, it's got a, it's got the, the pro, pro, proposal has got a different policy for uh, different number of bugs, and you know it's probably open for 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 discussion. It may also really depend on the package which we really want to talk about. Like you know, if it's open SSL. Probably a moderate level flaw is something which should be immediately fixed. But if it is like PHP or something like that, I mean, if it is something, if, if it's if it's a game, then probably a moderate level flaw is some, something which we may want to hang around for 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 one release cycle or two 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 release cycles or something like that. It makes the, the policies make sense to me, but I definitely wouldn't remove anything automatically. I would just. Well, no, you, compose I, I a you list of candidates kind of, and bring it to FESCO. Uh, to yeah, I, I think it would, it would be just like following the unresponsive maintainer process, uh, or similar to that. Yeah. Whereas you file the bugs, there's been no response, then you file a request to remove, there's no response from the maintainer, and then it goes to FESCO for an individual. But it takes too long. That's okay. Let it, well, it's better than now, yeah. Yeah, let it let it take long because some of these packages have been sitting here for six years, right? Mm -hmm. If it takes a month, that's fine. And uh, uh, Fesco does does not need to review individual packages, right? And so you can kind of wait for. No, but there there are certain packages that have open CVEs for for ages, yeah. and we still cannot remove them because just how important they are. Yeah. So. so so those those would be a part of the critical package set, like you know, yeah, which can, can, cannot be removed. But if, if the back, if the CV has been pretty sitting, big set though. yeah, uh, if, if the CV is, has been sitting on it for, for 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 so long, probably it does make sense for the package maintainer to comment why the CV has not been fixed, or you know why he cannot right. fix, fix it or that's, something like that. That's the, the that's what the public shaming email comes yeah. with, and then hopefully they come in. If they can't be fixed, that's sometimes that's acceptable. You, it can't be fixed for this reason, and close won't fix. So then, it no longer shows up as an open CVE, but it's a why. Yeah. Or, or, or you know, as as, as you men, um, mentioned, the exploit or the, the exploit vector over here is not strong enough. Like, you know, if you, if you really need USB access or physical access to a machine, or you know, if you have an explo exploit which is extremely di difficult to pull, then you know, it it, it may maybe some something which we really don't want to fix. So you know. 
the whole op operating system model which we have right now is is not not based in a way that you know like you know when when we had uh, meltdown inspector uh, there there was a lot of there was a lot a lot of un cry but, but 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 then when the next version of specter came out like when we had specter 2 or specter 3 then uh, pe people were not, were not that interested because by by that time they they realized that this is not something which can be remotely exploited or something like that or well, it, it's extremely difficult to remotely exploit really it's i mean it's more or less so we obviously are closing those as quickly as we as we can but they're not really a concern for the Fedora user because of what's required to set up that attack. You have to be a serious target. Serious targets are running rel. They're not running Fedora. <laughs> but we still close them as quickly as we can. Yeah. I mean, what did what is the status of Festival so far? Uh, well, on, on Monday meeting, we decided to to discuss it here, but <laughs> I'm the only one, so, <laughs> so maybe maybe at the roundtable discussions. I think it's tomorrow or the day after. Sure. Yes. So CVEs are one thing, but what is with things like you ship a configuration file that uh, maybe has some wrong uh, uh, things, or uh, maybe you label some files in a wrong way, or put it uh, with a uh, wrong access rights uh, into the wrong directory. This is not reviewed at the moment, right? Uh, doesn't the package the review tool figure out if if yeah? But the, the package packaging is review is more like the functional thing and not like non-functional things like security. Uh, I think it, it ensures that the packaging standards are being followed, right? I mean, if you if you install a file, the, if if the the RPM installs the file in the wrong place. Uh, then I, I think the package review tool does tell you that you know this file is being installed at or you know the file system per okay. permissions are wrong or you know that so, the, so the process is, here is not meant to cover this. Right? Yeah. Okay. No, but there, that, that is a good point. I mean, if somebody introduces a package that let's say it's running a, a listener service of some sort, and that's like completely exposed to root by the default config or something. Yeah. There's there's nothing in the package review process that's going to say that. So how do we audit? How do we audit Fedora and bring up suggested changes? So this isn't a CD, it's just a suggested config chain. That's a valid question. And I don't have the answer to it right now, but it's a valid question. Yeah, we, we see this uh, a lot also with Docker containers at the moment, uh, where we say, okay, uh, if we don't build a Docker container on our own, how can we be sure that all the communication that is going out and in from the container is really as it should be. So it's the same thing, actually. Yeah. So even if the, the software is free of any known flaws, uh, maybe the one who composed the container or built the package made some kind of mistake, can happen to every one of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and here, a review process would be very valuable. We, we have a, a, a review process for packages, yes, but they focus more on the functional level. Yeah. Well, and the theory is you trust the packager, but the, the reality behind it is it's a lot of times the packager is a packager and not a, you know, they're, they're, they're interested in, in actually pushing that out there, but they're, they're a packager and they're not really a developer on it, so they don't understand what they've, they've done. And there's nothing wrong with that other than if we had a way to audit it for security, that would be great. Yeah, so when, when I spoke about it, introducing security reviews in, in the package or audit tool, I wanted to ensure that you know most of it is done in an automated way because uh, security is hard, right? And package reviewers probably don't understand security well. So like, you know, probably try to, do, try, try to automate as much as the, the tool can. And yeah. you know, point to patches and stuff like that. Yeah, but but the, the thing was because you mentioned the thing, uh, you you build a backdoor on your own into the package, uh, into the package. Uh, this must not be or cannot be, must not be related to a CVE or something like that. Maybe it's just some kind of a, a smart backdoor that you write into yeah. the code, and that's maybe yeah. would be covered then. Well, it might be good to write a basic tool that would scan. Um, you know, scan open ports as a result of the package, so you know it spins it up in a VM, and once it started, is it exposing like anything? Uh, uh, you know, check for set UID, set GID, um, things like that. 
and it just spits it. It's kind of like the uh, you know, right now when you run our PM lint, it spits out a bunch of warnings and then errors, right? Well, this just spits out as just kind of a warning. Hey, this is opening up this port, or this has these set UID, set GID, and it's part of it, as part of the review process. You, know, you you can say, well, they're just warnings, and and here's why they're there. You explain why they're there, or you don't, because maybe they're just completely unaware. At the moment, it's not included in the review process. No. Yeah. It would be but it's a more difficult problem. I detect an backdoor from what, what we are actually proposing. We're proposing something that can be done today. Detecting a backdoor is a much more complex uh, yeah. problem. Yes. And yeah, but if you, if you do it, uh, I think this sandboxing approach, I think it's a good, good idea because then you don't have to uh, analyze the static code or something like that. So you have just your black box and you see what is the black box doing. I think that's the right. faster way to find out is there something which does not behave um, compared to the last uh, uh, test, as example. I'm not sure if this is doable in, uh, or how you do it uh, within RHEL, uh, if you have something like this uh, for your packages in RHEL. Uh, well process is a, is a little bit more complicated because a lot of times we, we read code. Right? Oh, so, okay. I mean, if, if, if there is a really, really important package which, which we need to introduce and it's a daemon and it's probably running as root or you know, some other, yeah. uh, other user, then uh, the, the review process includes you know, trying to read through each line of, of code and you know, trying to see okay. if some, something malicious is being done uh, or you know, run a fuzzle or something like, like that on that. But, uh, this process is really difficult to do with Fedora because like without of the churn of packages which we have uh, plus second thing is uh, each package is, is reviewer may not be that technical enough to you know try to understand the nuances of the language like you know how big an int is and you know what will happen if there's an integer overflow and yep. is, is there a potential heap buffer overflow over here so you know all of the reviewers may not be that technical enough they may not have enough time as well to you know to try to go to each other so we, we need to we need to ensure that at least the basic set of function functions are performed, right? Yeah, yeah. And most of the, those functionalities are are, are, are automated, and the warnings which it gives are are you know probably lay, are in plain English so that you know the uh, the package reviewer will understand. There's, there is a place that actually we can do a lot of this that I hadn't thought about until just now. So the, the CI process, the one that's supposed to be gating everything and is turned off now, but will eventually be turned back on. The CI process could actually run a basic script because it, it is installing and testing that, that RPM when it's built. So it could run a script and say, all right, well, that RPM has opened these ports and you know, it's got these. You know, it does the check and it just dumps it into it, the same It does board. a check as far as installing the RPM. It doesn't necessarily start in daemons or anything else. Uh, well, it should. I mean, doesn't yeah, yet, it, but it, it should. Yeah, it, it should. But that's 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 more, more complicated. But that's why yeah, each package has its own test set. That's right, right. And if, if once once people run the test, the problem is the same people that aren't aren't going to go and close their CDs or the same ones that aren't going to run tests. Or, yeah, well, but that, it those, seems those can we be, have those some, can be generic tests. And, think and we have some people who are very interested in writing tests and and putting pull requests in for those. Yeah. So you know, okay. if it's not any effort other than. I click a button, click a button and then hopefully they'll get taken. That's it. That sounds right. Yeah, I guess that is that's it then. I had a couple of comments. I apologize, I had to run out and take a quick call with my boss. But uh, I don't know if you guys already talked about this, but my, my two comments are not all CEs are created equal, and some are obviously more more important to fix than others. Um, and I would like like from kind of the FESCO perspective or my own personal take on what I think Pesco should do, let me put it that way, is I would love to see what are the top 10 or top 20 packages, especially those that are in critical path, but have high or critical CDEs, and, and have us start from, from, from the Pesco side pushing and say, hey, let's, let, let's have a hit list of maybe it's the top 10 to, to begin with, and let's go through those and try to get those fixed up. Fix the things like image magic, you know, that, that, that need a little love. There's probably others in there as well that are in the critical path. But, Fix. And then, and then, so we kind of work down at from the top level. The developers, we get to developers better tools to work at from the bottom. Well, we're, 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 we were talking about we were going on a product was doing a public shaming email to develop once a month as well with these yep. with packages with open CVs, and that way, 
when the same ones keep showing up month after month, maybe they'll get some peer pressure. And, and, and can we make sure that those are that there's a list sorted by developer? Yes. You know, yes. There's no reason not to. That's, I mean, that, that'll make sure I get my cleanup. I don't know okay. about anybody else. But. <laughs> What, uh, one other question I did have. So you you talked about basically we want to reboot the our security team. What so what's the process for actually rebooting this? You've got great ideas that you want to implement, but as far as I mean, there's a mailing list that hasn't been used in a month. Are we going to fire that back up, or are we going to go back to meetings? Um, you know, what, what's the next step there? Yeah. So one uh, these these three projects which I just just uh, described, I want to use the mailing list to actually talk about those those, those projects. And see if really anybody is kind of interested. Like you know, the the ideas which which you said. Like you know, we we kind of send a once in a month shaming list to say, Fedora devil, or you know, we we work on on this dashboard thing which I was trying to talk talk about. So I I want to use the mailing list as you know a forum to dis discuss things. So so the basic concept is to do do things which are which are more interesting than than you know trying to ping maintainer or you know trying to patch, uh, trying to backport patches and stuff like that, to do a lot of things which are a little bit more interesting. I'm obviously wait, wait, waiting uh, from Fes for, for Fesco to try to figure out if we really want to implement the package in the whole process, or you know, if there's something else which we really want to do. But there, there really needs to be a way of trying to, uh, trying to uh, work with these packages which have, like, you know, CV is open for five years or six years or something like that. Probably because upstream is dead, or you know the maintainer is no longer, longer active, or something like that. Uh, I want wanted to do a distribution comparison as well. So I I I, I don't have the figures right, right now, but I was able to only finish Fedora, Debian, and I think Open SUSE. And I I found that Debian has got the least number of Open CVs which are open, and Open SUSE is probably. Fedora is, is probably one and a half times uh, what we have in Fedora. So uh, Debian has got a really good security process, mm -hmm. and uh, I am not sure what they do with packages which are which which have open CVs. But you know they 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 really they are able to probably in some way they are really able to address the CV issues or you know pl or close the bugs which they cannot be addressed. Right. So I, I want to use use the mailing list to start a discussion on you know what. Are, and uh, once we have the packages uh, which we can, uh, which product security can send back to uh, upstream, we want to see you know, if, if uh, these systems can be uh, is, can be patched into Fedora review, and you know if package reviewers can start using the new package uh, Fedora review to see if you know, you know if we can do security scans as well. So that's that's what. Plus, I I, I want to remove names from the. The web website for pe people who are probably no longer interested, or you know, so I think right now we have some 15 names or 20 names. Last I checked, uh, a lot of these guys are probably no, no longer interested. So may, may, maybe we should remove names as well. Uh, That's another great topic for the mailing list, and just say, hey, hey, people who are interested, yeah, reply, reply to this mailing list if you're still interested in having your name on the list. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, list is, the list is still there; it just yeah. doesn't get posted to. Yep. So. Yeah. Plus, uh. We are also internally trying to have a mechanism in which uh, embargoed security information can be uh, transmitted con confidentially to probably one or two mem mem members. I think I'm not sure if it, if it is supposed to include a FESCO member, but you know probably we are trying to see if we can like give a heads up, right. saying that you know next week there is going to be a big issue. So you know you make make, make sure that your 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 bill infrastructure is okay. So, so that because you know we need to build a package in a few hours and make sure it, it, it is pushed to the repositories. So in pre previous in instances, I, I, I think during Heartbleed or shell Shellshock, I had to ping Dennis Gil Gilmore and I had to tell him that you know there is this new open SSL package which is going to come in next five five hours yeah. and make sure it goes to all the mirrors in the next two hours. And he used to tell tell, tell me that this is not really how mirror ma 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 managers work. So you know I, and. Uh, he probably did it builds and you know he started to push yes he started a sync script and things like that but then that's really a big pro problem right because and we had instances in which current we used to do it for CentOS much faster than you know we used to do it for Fedora because the way our infrastructure is and you know the infrastructure so, so we are going to soon have a mechanism in which we can give this information and you know uh, under some kind of non-disclosure agreement or something and you know make sure that the infrastructure 
is ready for the packages to be built and deployed and stuff like that. So there are a lot more smaller things which are happening in the back back end as well. Yes. Uh, I was thinking that um, when we have a list of open CVs for a package, um, I think a valid option would be before this package comes into the next Fedora version, that box has either be closed as well and fixed or whatever, and then we simply also see if the maintainer is really interested in continuing to maintain this package or if someone else will pick it up. So, I, think, I think that's a great idea as long as we you know, filter the CVs and say if they're high or critical. You're if, if, we, if we get a trivial CV that nobody's, well. that's not exploitable and it's very low risk. So, that's, so it, it brings up the interesting point though of the, the packages where the maintainer's been gone for years, right? Mm -hmm. There is no maintainer anymore. The package has been abandoned, it just wasn't formally abandoned. So if we have that sort of a process, say at branch point, mm -hmm. or you know, right before branch point or whatever, and say, give us a response, now, you do have the issue of you can't just pull packages that have that are depths for other packages. Right. It has to be a leaf node, yeah. and it can't be a critical package. But, but that would at least give us a point to, to ping maintainers and say, hey, respond to this, and, and, and it doesn't, you know, it won't get branched. Right. Or if you don't respond, mm -hmm. it won't get branched. Now they can annually go create the branch. Well, then, sure. But then, then there'd be some sort of positive. Yes, intent they, they've, they've now said that, hey, I'm maintaining this package, right? right? I, th I think that's a great idea. You, you can actually, even in the email, give the instructions on how to manually create the branch if, if they missed it. Because people do go on vacation or whatever, but that would be a great way to, to automatically weed out some things. Okay. So uh, that's, that's why the proposal says, says that you know we want to remove it from X plus 2, right? So if, if the issue is open against Fedora X, we probably, depending, like, like, like you said, depending upon the security impact of the flaw, so if, it, if, it's, if, if it's a law or something like that, then we, we, we probably won't care a lot. If it's a moderate or an important one, then you know, we really want to make sure we fix it as soon as. So that, that's why we wait for Fedora X plus 2. So like you know, if the package maintainer is on vacation or he's not well or he's really busy or something like that, right. probably two release cycles should, should, should be more than enough time for him to either respond by saying that you know I, I am going to fix or I don't care or I'm no, no longer a contributor or, or, or something like that. But in that process, in respect to the critical path, or uh, to not in the critical path, or to leave packages, then the most important packages will actually continue building. Because the most important are the ones that people well, are, but, are linking again. But the most important packages are the ones who actually probably have maintainers. They're just not addressing the CVEs. So, so we can close them. So. Right. But so we're talking about maintainers who didn't close them. Right. So that the. The public shaming bit there will hopefully help with that. In those cases, the maintainer is typically still there. Right? They're still updating packages. They just, for some reason, aren't addressing bugs. Which happens. Yeah, I, I, know, I know it happens. But, but if there's some process to notify him, uh, Luke is going to delete it. If he doesn't do this, he's going to do it, I guess. Maybe. But, I mean, there's no teeth to it because you can't actually remove it if he doesn't do it. You can always remove you no, you can't. Break no, no, you can't. No, you so can't. Just like we had a policy that we were going to turn off the, the i686 kernel if there were build issues and, and the SIG didn't fix them. And as soon as we did, we realized that we broke building anything. So we had to work around that. And it, 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 yeah, there's, there's no teeth to it, right? Now there are because we, we separated kernel headers, but until then. So basically, you will have something like uh, the FTD FS sim. Like if package is no longer building in low light, it will, it will be set to obsolete at one point in time. You will have the same thing for a uh, security issue yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, some uh, someone co co commented on the Fresco ticket saying that you know we we use the FTBS process, uh, you know a process similar to to that to try to move up a package. Because you know that that would kind of send a mail to the maintainer as well, saying that you know we are we are going to remove the package or something like that. And that, that that would probably be much more easier than to have some other mechanism to try try to remove the package. So probably some something similar to to that. Wow. Well, 
thank you for driving this actually. I think it was a lot missing from the door. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot.